Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Erica. If you're new here, welcome. I hope that you consider subscribing. Over here on this channel, we talk about all things home decor and lifestyle. So I hope that you um, consider subscribing and that you um, choose to stick around. Um, so today, guys, I wanted to come on and just share a few tips about um, taking a path to home ownership. Uh, so I purchased my new construction home. It will be a year in April. And I felt like I just wanted to come on here and talk about some ways that you can prepare for that as a single woman. So um, I am single. And so I took this journey by myself and I decided that I did not want to wait until I found, you know, uh, a companion, a husband. Um, I figured that, you know, God has blessed me and that um, I wanted to take this journey by myself and um, it's been great. So I figured why not come on here and share some of those um, tips and recommendations um, on what I did and things that really helped me to prepare for that um, and just make me really successful um, during this home ownership path. So just for a little bit of context, so I am 43. I do live in Dallas, Texas, and I purchased a four bedroom, three bath home um, with an office. It is 2,100 square feet. And um, I wanted to share my age because I feel like oftentimes um, society and social media will make you feel like um, you have to, you know, rush your journey or like if you get past a certain age, that is too late. And I'm just here to tell you guys that that is never the case. So <clears throat> before I start talking too much, let's go ahead and get into the tips. <clears throat> so I have nine tips that I want to share with you all um, on what I did, like I said, to be successful in this journey and things that are helping me to maintain um, home ownership um, successfully. So tip number one, I would say is that you definitely want to understand your budget. This is super important going into the home ownership journey, um, especially uh, having a um, single single home income just as a single person. I think that that's really important. So for me, I um, I decided that I wanted to sit down and figure out what my budget was and then come up with, you know, a scope in mind as far as to what would be the maximum amount of um, mortgage that I could afford by myself and still live comfortably. So I think that, you know, before anything else, you want to understand what your budget looks like. So that way you are not wasting your time when it comes, you know, to looking for a home and you're not, you know, looking at something that's completely out of your budget because the whole purpose of buying a home is to stay in a home, right? You don't want to get something that you can't afford and to only live there for a short amount of time and then end up going into foreclosure, unfortunately. So tip number one, definitely understand your budget. Uh, tip number two, you want to decide on how much house you can afford, which does tie in with tip number one. Um, for me, you know, I'm going to be completely transparent in this video. Um, that's just who I am. And the house that I'm in, um, the total price for it was $375,000. It was actually a little closer to $400,000, but after I did my down payment, um, it bought it down to where I was financing uh, $375,000. So that's what I financed. Um, my interest rate was 3.75. So I feel like I got a pretty decent interest rate. But knowing how much house you can afford will help you to keep things in scope and to keep you on track um, and just keep you aligned with the vision and with what you're comfortable with um, for your budget, you know, based off of what you can afford. And um, then from there, you know, you can, you know, coordinate with a realtor and that person can take you around in your desired demographic. And they will also know, you know, which communities to show you based off of the maximum amount of 
um, house that you can afford. So for me, I did not want to get a home that was over $400,000. Um, I knew that $400,000 was my maximum and that, you know, also once I did put down a certain amount of money on my home, that that would also decrease the, um, the total cost of the house that I would finance. So definitely understand how much house you can afford. Um, tip number three, set a realistic timeline on when you plan to purchase. I will say that um, when I first decided that I wanted to embark on a home ownership journey, at first I was looking at townhomes. And you guys, to be honest, I just did not have that super positive, strong feeling of moving forward. So I was looking at townhomes and I told my realtor, I said, you know what, I want to hit the pause button and you know, I'm not comfortable with moving forward. Let me just sit on this for about a year let me think about it let me continue to save my money and then you know once i'm ready i'll reach back out to you and you guys sure enough a year later after doing some more research i had decided that i did not you know want to purchase a town home for many reasons and that i prefer to purchase a single family home and i'm so glad that i allowed myself that time to really sit back and reflect because purchasing a home is a huge deal and it's a really big commitment. So I just wanted to make sure that for me, that once I decided on what I wanted to do, that I was 100% you know, good with that plan and I was completely at peace with that and I wouldn't later on have you know, uh, buyer's remorse. So just make sure that you set a realistic timeline and like myself, if you need to pivot from that and take some time, step back and then come back and revisit that, then that's definitely what you should do. Because again, you want to be 100% sure before you move forward um, with your purchase. So tip number four, understand your loan options. Um, for me, I did get an FHA loan um, and there are, you know, just different there's different rules and different requirements just depending on what type of loan that you get. I know that sometimes people will go for a VA loan or they'll do like a conventional loan. But for me, in my situation, the FHA loan was the best route for me to go. Um, but understanding what your loan options are will really help you, um, you know, as you look at different homes and being able to understand what different programs you qualify for. Um, I will say that since I was a first time home buyer, that I didn't really get a lot of incentives, not like I thought that I would, but where I did and where I was able to capitalize at was that I got some incentives from my builder. So since I decided to finance my home, through the builder, I was able to capitalize on some incentives that way. And um, they even um, helped with some of the closing costs, just different things like that. Um, so just make sure that you know your loan options and what type of incentives come with those. Like I said, sometimes if you do decide to finance with the builder, there are some you know different incentives that they will include like right now in the current state that the um, economy is in, I know that a lot of builders are lowering the price of the home because the interest rates have increased. So just make sure that you're aware of your options so that way you can ensure that you're getting the best deal and the most for your money. And so for tip number five, um, make sure that you decide that if you want a new build or a current build. So for me, that was another thing too that I needed to think about was, did I want to move into a home that was, you know, currently occupied or if I preferred going the route of getting a new construction home? And so my home is a spec home, which means that the builder speculated on what the buyers would want and they decided on the flooring and the cabinet colors, um, the layout. Like I was not able to customize anything with this home. 
I was able to choose from a few different packages, but the packages were already, you know, put together. They had already decided on what would come with certain packages. So just, you know, make sure that you know going into this if you want to purchase a new construction home or a current build. Um, for me, one of the reasons that I decided that I wanted to get a new construction home is even though this is my first home, I can tell you guys right now that this is definitely going to be my forever home. I don't have any plans on um, looking at any other homes. That was another reason why I just really wanted to take my time and make sure that when I did make my purchase, it was everything that I wanted as far as um, you know the space, the area, the layout, the plan, all of that stuff. Something that I could definitely grow into and be comfortable and not outgrow. So for me, new construction was more desirable. And two, also, there's nothing wrong with moving into a home that someone has occupied, but I don't know. I'm just kind of funny about stuff like that. And I just wanted something that no one had ever lived in before. And it was completely brand new. And I could come in and, you know, make some customizations as I saw fit. But just be sure to figure out if you want to do new construction or a current home. And it's not to say that if you choose one or the other that you can't change your mind later. You, you totally can. It's just all about what, you know, fits into what you're looking for and what you're comfortable with. So for me, it was definitely new construction. Um, so also uh, tip number six, after you move in um, your new home, make sure that you pace yourself as far as decorating. One thing that I can tell you guys is that I am a content creator, but I also follow other um, cont content creators that, you know, are into um, home decor and home styling and things like that. And um it is so easy to get caught up in feeling like you have to rush and decorate your home. For me, I knew coming in that I had a certain budget that I wanted to work with and that I was going to work within and that I wasn't going to feel rushed or pressured, um, you know, trying to decorate my house. I didn't have anybody that I'm trying to impress or anybody that I'm trying to, you know, keep up with. Um, this is going to be a journey, y'all, because I have done some customizations so far to my home, but what I can tell you is that there is so much more that I want to do, and I feel like that is the beauty in this journey is that I get to take my time, see my home evolve, and just be able to understand and make sure in my decisions that I still have the same ideas as time progresses, um, because you know you guys have different likes and different wants as we, you know, um, see different things and our tastes do change. So I am totally comfortable where I am right now as far as what I have done with the house so far. But like I said, there is just so much more that I want to do to the house. But I don't, I'm not going to allow myself to feel some type of way about that. I will, um take my time and I will do it on my own timeline. So that's just my advice to you guys. Don't let someone make you feel pressured. Like you have to hurry up and decorate your house and, you know, be on somebody else's timeline or like you're not moving fast enough. That is like the least of my worries. And, um, I'm enjoying this so far. Um, so yeah, just stick to what you want to do with your home and your own pace and be happy and comfortable um, with that decision. Okay, so tip number seven for you guys is, for me, what I found that I think really works is having um, two savings accounts. So for me, I decided that I was going to have a savings account where I put money aside for like, you know, home repairs or home emergencies if I have an appliance that is going to probably go out or something like that. Hopefully that's not the case, but I want to always be prepared and just to be able to set that money to the side, um, separate from my regular savings, which is where I put, you know, money up for, you know, 
things that may happen on a rainy day, like with my car, or if I may want to pull some money from there to go on a trip or, um, you know, to decorate my home. But I do believe that it is very, um, it's really important to have that division. Um, also, I have my second savings account for my home that I put money to the side just in case like for um, property taxes. I do have an escrow account, which means that um, my property taxes and um, my private insurance is all rolled into my mortgage. So when I make my mortgage payment, some of that money is pulled out from my escrow account, which takes care of my taxes. And then the other part of the monies for the mortgage goes into um, the principal and interest for my payment. But you guys, you know, banks make mistakes all the time and I never want to get caught caught up to where, you know, I'm probably in a financial bind and I don't have those monies available. So I believe in having two separate accounts. It also helps me to sleep better at night, if I'm being honest, just knowing that that cushion is there and that, um, you know, it's available if I you know, should need it. So definitely make sure that you have two separate saving, savings account to be able to divide that money up um, just in case you should ever need it. Um, tip number eight, make sure that you definitely get the warranties. Um, I'm definitely speaking from a place of having a new construction home. Um, I have all new appliances, yes. I have a new... Um, you know, uh, AC unit and all of that stuff, yes. But I think that it is very important to make sure that you get the extended warranties. I'll probably pay like maybe, um, I don't know, maybe 30, 40 bucks a month just to have the extended warranties. And that warranty covers my, my HVAC unit. It covers my dishwasher, my stove, my, um, my range top. Um, my oven, it covers all of that, the microwave. Um, again, you just never know um, what could happen. Even with it being a new construction home, I don't care. I think that it's important to have those warranties because, you know, with all of the COVID shortages and things like that, you just, you just never know. It's man-made um, and I just rather would be safe than sorry and to make sure that I have those warranties in place you know, just to be able to back me up. And it does give me a really strong, you know, peace of mind, like I said. And um, I feel a lot more secure knowing that I can refer back to those warranties just in case something malfunctions and I do, you know, have that um, in place. So my next tip, um, tip number nine, is make sure that you get your home inspected. So when I first moved in, I chose not to get the inspection um, when I moved in. However, being on that my entire home is covered under a one-year warranty, I am going to get the inspection done on my home before my 11-month warranty runs out. Because what happens is that I am able to submit a... Um, a list of things that need to be repaired, um, you know, replaced while I am under that one-year warranty with my home. And so being on that, I am coming up on my 11-month warranty since I did not get the home inspection um, prior to me moving in. I wanted to give the home a chance to settle um, and allow the foundation to settle as well prior to me getting that home inspection. So I do have someone scheduled to come out. The inspection um, is running me about $600, but I think that it is so worth it because um, if they do find something that is not right and I need to have the builders come back out um, to fix that or um, make sure that things are you know, functioning the way that they should, it falls within that warranty time frame and it could save me thousands of dollars down the line. So whether or not you choose to get a home inspection before and after or, um, you know, before and not after, either way, just make sure that you do get your home inspected um, because, you know, like I said, these 
they throw these houses up so fast, y'all, and it looks good, and you never know what's going on behind the walls, what's going on with the insulation, the foundation. Um, so I think that that's super critical. So like I said, I do have someone coming out to inspect my home so that way I can, you know, feel good about closing out my um, checklist that I'm going to submit over to those guys for any type of repairs um, that I do find. And my last tip, tip number 10 is, uh, I don't know how many ways or how many times I can stress this, but do not, do not compare your journey to someone else's. Um, comparison is definitely the, um, the thief of joy. It will have you second questioning yourself, doubting yourself, stressing yourself out. Um, your journey is your own and I am so grateful for my journey and where I am in it. But don't allow, you know, people, family members, friends, social media, society to make you feel some type of way um, about where you are in your journey and the decisions that you're making and the pace at which you're moving. Um, like I said, I'm 43. I closed on my home when I was 41, um, a few months before I had turned 42. So I was, you know, over 40 before I even purchased my very first home. And you guys, um, I'm good with that. There's a lot of people that will make you feel like, oh, if you're past 30 and you haven't purchased your first home or if you're not married and all of that stuff, I am here to tell you as a 40-something-year-old woman that there is nothing wrong with the trajectory that you are on. Um, I'm single, right? I don't have any plans on getting married. I never want to be married again, and I'm completely okay with that. And you know, I'm also here to tell you that it is possible to be a single woman and um, obtain home ownership. You know, um, just make sure, you know, with all the tips that I've given you to incorporate that and to, you know, budget, save your money, you know, have a vision, execute your plan. And I'm telling you guys, home ownership is so obtainable. And even though the rates um, right now are, you know, higher than what we would like to see them. Um, make sure that you are doing your homework and having the right conversations because, you know, like I said, the, 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 the builders nowadays, they are meeting you where you are because they're, you know, just as well aware of the rates and that, you know, people still want to, to buy homes and people are still buying homes because the builders are, you know, giving those incentives and lowering the price of their inventory, you know, to make this possible for families. So I hope that you guys found this video helpful and that the tips that I shared can help someone. If you have any questions for me, leave them down below in the comment section. Like I said, I'm an open book. I'm super transparent and um, I love just sharing things that I've done to help me, you know, obtain home ownership successfully and still live a really good life. So thank you guys so much for being here. Um, and I appreciate all of the support and for you guys just, you know, being with me on this home um, journey. And there's just so much more to come. So I hope that you guys do decide to stick around and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.